Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The definition of the word apparition is a supernatural appearance of a person or a thing. In the context of Christianity, they refer to times when our Lord God, all praise and honor be given to his most holy name, shows heavenly things to people on earth, or allows those in heaven to interact with those on earth physically. For example, St. Joan of Arc saw apparitions of St. Catherine of Alexandria and St. Margaret of Antioch. Even our Lord himself has come down to interact with people on earth after his ascension, such as to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque and St. Faustina Kowalska, and he has appeared alongside his mother many times, as you will see later. Marian apparitions are appearances of our Blessed Mother on earth. Importantly, it should be understood that Our Lady does not come down to earth of her own volition, as she does not have this power, but only when our Lord wills it. Every authentic Marian apparition has been sent by God. Let us keep in mind what Our Lady herself said in Scripture. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Marian apparitions are an influential part of our holy Catholic faith. While they are not dogma or required belief, it is likely that at least some of them are real. Of course, in theory, it would be easy for a person to lie and claim to have seen our Blessed Mother when they have not. This is why apparitions are given approval by the local bishop or the Vatican. When an apparition is given approval, this means our faith leaders have deemed it worthy of belief. In this video, I will be listing every Marian apparition that has been approved, explicitly or explicitly, by the bishop or Vatican, with the exception of a few, in chronological order. I will also give you a brief overview of each apparition. If you want to learn more about any of these apparitions, I encourage you to do your own research. Let's begin. The very first known Marian apparition is Our Lady of the Pillar. What stands out about this apparition is that it occurred while Our Lady was still alive on earth. This means this apparition is different from others. It is more similar to saintly bilocation, which is when a saint miraculously appears in two places at once. In this apparition, Our Lady appeared to St. James the Greater while he was in Spain. St. James was trying to spread the gospel to the Spanish pagans and felt despondent, hopeless that he would be able to convert them. Our Lord allowed Our Lady to appear to St. James and offer him encouragement, and also requested that a church be built where she had appeared. Our Lady left behind a pillar with a small statue of herself with the infant Jesus on it. This church was indeed built and is now the Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady of the Pillar. Since this time, there have been many miracles attested to the pillar and statue itself. The apparition of Our Lady of the Pillar was accepted as canonical by Pope Innocent XIII in 1723. Most likely, the second ever Marian apparition was the appearance of Our Lady to St. Thomas in India. When the time had come for Our Lady's earthly life to, to be completed, she was assumed into heaven, much like the prophet Elijah. All of the apostles were with Mary as her earthly life ended, except for St. Thomas, who could not attend because he was evangelizing in India. Our Lady, the mother of the apostles, did not leave St. Thomas without a goodbye. She appeared to him in India and gave him her girdle before she was taken up into heaven. This girdle is still a venerated relic today. There are many variations of this account, but the overall idea is the same. This apparition has not been literally approved by the Vatican or bishops as far as I can tell, but the girdle is kept in Prato Cathedral. S Certainly, the most important Marian apparition in the Christian faith is the vision of the woman clothed with the sun in John's Revelation. This apparition is unique because while it is the Blessed Virgin Mary, it also represents other things. In Revelation, John sees a vision of a woman clothed with the sun with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. Under her is a dragon who wants to devour her child. The woman gives birth to a male child, but the child is swept away from the dragon up to the father, and the woman flees into the wilderness. Revelation is very complicated to interpret because many of the symbols have multiple meanings. In this case, on one hand, the woman in this vision represents the church, with her child being the faithful people. However, this vision also shows Our Lady. This vision demonstrates Our Lady's queenship, Roll as the mother of God, roll as the new Ark of the Covenant, roll as the new Eve, and the sorrows Our Lady endures. We remember this apparition whenever we pray the glorious mysteries of the Rosary. Sometime in between the 3rd and 4th centuries, 
Our Lady appeared in an area in France to a convert named Villa. Villa had become gravely ill, and Our Lady instructed her to go to Mount Anis and lie on a flagstone there. Villa did so and was cured. Our Lady requested that a church be built in the location, and it was, and it became the place of many pilgrimages. Pope Leo IX wrote in 1051, In this sanctuary on Mount Anise, more than anywhere, the Blessed Virgin Mary has received veneration, honor, and the love of a great many believers in the country. In the 4th century, a Roman couple who were wealthy and childless prayed for enlightenment on where their wealth ought to go after their deaths. Our Lady subsequently appeared to them and instructed them to build a, ba a basilica. On August 5th, it snowed on the summit of the Esquiline Hill, and Pope Liberius traced out an outline of the basilica, St. Mary Major, in the snow. The dedication of the basilica has been celebrated since 1568 and was called Dedication of the Basilica of Our Lady of the Snows up until 1966. In Spain, there was a war between the Moors and Astorius, an area in Spain. The king of Astorius was a man named Don Palayo. Right before a battle, Our Lady appeared to the king and, without a word, gave him a statue of herself and the Christ child. King Don Palayo left the statue in a cave and prayed for Our Lady's intercession in front of it. Indeed, miraculously, the underdog Spaniards won the battle. The basilica stands at the spot of the apparition. In 1061, a pious English noblewoman named Rochelgis de Virches prayed for a way to honor Our Lady. God sent her Blessed Mother to Lady Rochelgis in response and showed her the house of the Holy Family, which was also where the Annunciation happened. Our Blessed Mother requested that a replica of the house be built in Walsingham. This was indeed carried out by the noblewoman. It was called the Holy House, and it became a shrine to our God and a place of many pilgrimages. With the Reformation, however, the Holy House was destroyed. The apparition of Our Lady of Walsingham was approved by Pope Leo XIII and Pope Pius XII. A less well-known yet important apparition, St. Dominic de Guzman was in France trying to convert the heretic Albigensians back to Catholicism, but struggled to succeed until Our Lady appeared to him and gave him the rosary. Of course, since then, the rosary has become one of the most important devotions in the church, being based on the Psalter, 150 psalms recited with beads by monks. I'm not sure if this was the first rosary, or if the rosary already existed, and Our Lady just gave St. Dominic a rosary to help him. Also known as Our Lady of Mercy, Our Lady appeared to St. Peter Nolasco, his confessor St. Raymond of Peñafort, and King James of Aragon in Barcelona, Spain. She requested that an order called the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary for the Ransom of Captives, or Mercedarians, be created. Its work would be to free Christian captives and offer its members in exchange if necessary. The order was indeed created. St. Raymond of Peñafort was canonized in 1601, and St. Peter Nolasco was canonized in 1628. In 1251, Our Lady appeared to the Carmelite Prior General, St. Simon Stock, in Aylesford, England. Prior to the apparition, the Carmelite order was growing, but facing difficulties in its growth. In response, the Carmelites prayed for Our Lady's intercession, and she appeared to their prior general. She told them to apply to Pope Innocent IV for help. She also gave St. Simon Stock the brown scapular of the Carmelite order, promising that those who wear the scapular faithfully will enter heaven after earthly death. The Pope did indeed help the Carmelites after they followed the advice of Our Lady. The brown scapular is still a widely held devotion today. The Holy See has praised the practice of wearing the brown scapular multiple times since the apparition of Our Lady. Much less well known than the other Guadalupe apparition, this one occurred in Extremadura, Spain. Our Lady appeared to a farmer named Gil Cordero who was looking for his cow. He found it, but strangely at first it was motionless before it suddenly began to move. With this, he saw Our Lady, who requested that he ask clergy and others to dig in the spot where they were, as a statue was buried there. Gil did so, and the people did indeed find the statue. The statue itself had a long and storied history, as it was originally in the Basilica of St. Mary Major, and was then given to Spain. 
Later, as Moors destroyed all Christian images, the statue was buried and forgotten about until Our Lady reminded us of it. A chapel was built there, and nowadays this apparition is commonly associated with Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico. Also known as Our Lady of the Guard, Our Lady appeared to a peasant man named Benedetto Pareto twice in 1490 in northwest Italy. First, on August 29th, she asked him to build a chapel on Mount Figagna. However, Pareto did not speak of his experience until a few days later, when he fell from a tree but was miraculously healed of his injuries after the Blessed Mother appeared again. After this, Pareto himself built the chapel. A new shrine was built on top of it later. The shrine was declared a basilica by Pope Benedict XV. For clarification, she is called Our Lady of the Watch because Mount Fignagna was a strategic observation spot in the Middle Ages. At this time, Venice was at war. St. Jerome Emiliani was appointed the governor of a fortress in Venice, and he was taken prisoner by the enemy. While he was imprisoned, Our Lady appeared to him, handed him the key to his shackles, and told him to run away. He followed her order and left, but found himself lost in the night. Our Lady appeared to him again and guided him to safety. After this experience, he became a pious man who devoted his life to helping those in need. He was canonized on July 16, 1767, by Pope Clement XIII. At this time, the Reformation was affecting Switzerland. An image of Our Lady was smashed and a chapel destroyed. During the night of Pentecost in West Lemon, Switzerland, the city councillor, Maurice von Mettenwill, saw Our Lady with our infant Lord. The city councillor immediately felt contrite and promised to rebuild what had been destroyed. Our Lady also appeared again later with two angels. A shrine was built at the location of the apparitions. In the Pyrenees in France, Our Lady appeared to a shepherdess and Glees Sagazan three times. Our Lady requested that a chapel be built, and she reiterated the importance of thanking God for his blessings. The chapel was finished in 1540, and many cures have been attested. Popes Urban VIII and Gregory XVI have issued indulgences for those who visit the shrine built in honor of the apparitions. Unfortunately, the church was turned into a school after the revolution. Perhaps one of the most famous and influential apparitions, these five appearances occurred in Mexico. St. Juan Diego Cuauhtla Tuatzin was an indigenous Aztec man and a recent convert to Christianity. He was at the hill of Tepeyac when Our Lady appeared to him and requested a church be built at the site. St. Juan Diego was obedient to her words and sought out the archbishop to fulfill her request. However, the archbishop did not believe him and disregarded his words. Later that day, Our Lady appeared to Juan Diego again and gave him encouragement. The next day, St. Juan Diego again went to the Archbishop. The Archbishop instructed the man to ask the Lady for a sign to prove her identity. Juan Diego went back to the hill and once again encountered Our Lady. He relayed the message from the Archbishop and she said she would give it the next day. However, on that day, Juan Diego's uncle became ill and Juan Diego needed to take care of him. As his uncle's condition deteriorated, Juan Diego left in search of a priest to administer the sacrament of last rites. He was ashamed that he had not shown up for Our Lady, so he tried to go around the hill to avoid encountering her. She still appeared to him and told him his uncle had been healed and told him to go to the top of the hill. Juan Diego did so and found Castilian roses, which were native to Europe and not the Americas, blooming. Our Lady arranged the flowers in Juan Diego's cloak for him so he could carry them to the archbishop. St. Juan Diego brought the flowers to the archbishop and unrolled his cloak to show the flowers. The flowers fell to the floor and the image of Our Lady was revealed to be implanted onto the cloak. The next day, when Juan Diego returned to his fully healed uncle, his uncle described how Our Lady appeared to him in bed when Juan Diego was gone and told him to tell the archbishop of his healing and that Our Lady wanted to be known as Our Lady of Guadalupe. The image of Our Lady of Guadalupe is now one of the most venerated relics in the world, and many different things have been studied regarding it which reveal the supernatural quality of the image. St. Juan Diego was canonized by Pope St. John Paul II in 2002. Our Lady appeared multiple times to St. Alphonsus Rodriguez, a Spanish Jesuit brother. At one point, Our Lady is recorded as saying, The love of all mothers cannot be compared to mine. Your love for me may not be related to my love for you.
St. Alphonsus was canonized by Pope Leo XIII in 1888. This apparition has some coincidental similarities to Guadalupe. In Mexico, an indigenous Tlaxcalan man was going to draw water from a spring believed to have healing properties, as there was an epidemic and his family was sick. He saw Our Lady, who led him to a different spring, which she told him was truly healing. Today the spring that Our Lady showed the man is a well, and many people visit it to be healed. Pope Benedict XIV granted indulgences to the faithful who venerated the image of Our Lady of Ocotlan. Five popes have venerated Our Lady of Ocotlan from the 18th century to the 20th century. Also known as Our Lady of Vilancani, she appeared three times in the 16th and 17th centuries in the village of Vilancani, India. First, Our Lady appeared with our infant Lord to a little boy delivering buttermilk to a rich man when the boy rested near a lake. She requested some milk for her child, which the little boy gave. Our Lady fed her most holy child before vanishing with him. When the little boy reached the rich man, he apologized for there being less milk in the pot. However, when the lid of the pot was raised, the pot was overflowing with milk. A few years later, a different little boy, who happened to be lame, was selling buttermilk in the street. Once again, Our Lady and Our Infant Lord appeared, and Our Lady requested some milk for her child. After feeding him, Our Lady healed the boy of his ailment and requested that he go to a Catholic man in another town and solicit his help in building a chapel in Vilancani. After Our Lady and Lord disappeared, the boy did as he was instructed, and the Catholics of the neighboring town built the chapel, dedicating it to Our Lady of Good Health. In 1620, a Portuguese merchant ship was caught in a terrible storm. The, soul, the sailors prayed for Our Lady's intercession, promising to build a church wherever they landed. Our Lady interceded on their behalf, and the vessel landed in Vilancani. Making good on their promise, they rebuilt the humble chapel into a stone church. The Vilancani church was elevated to a minor basilica by Pope John the Twenty Third in 1962. Our Lady appeared in Ecuador to a Conceptionist nun, Mariana Francisca de Jesus Torres, several times over a long period. She relayed different messages to the nun. It seems that what they say is disputed, so I won't elaborate. The apparitions were confirmed by the bishop in 1611, but I don't know if that approval would extend to the apparitions that took place after. The good event in question is the presentation of Jesus. In Shiluva, Lithuania, a nobleman named Petrus Gedguaudas built a Catholic church. However, Shiluva later became predominantly Protestant, and the church was burned down, although documents and valuables survived and were buried by the parish priest. The land was then seized by Protestants. Subsequently, Catholics opened a legal case against them to regain the land, but they didn't know where the documents proving their ownership were. In 1608, Shepherd children saw Our Lady and Our Infant Lord on the spot where the church once stood. Our Lady was weeping. The next day, the children brought many people from the village who also saw Our Lady and Lord. This reminded an assistant of the parish priest of the burial, and the documents were finally recovered. In 1622, the case was won by the Catholics, and a church was built on the land. In 1775, Pope Pius VI confirmed the apparition as authentic in a papal decree. In Coromoto, Venezuela, Our Lady and Our Infant Lord appeared to the leader of the Caspez native tribe and his wife. Our Lady instructed him to take his people to be baptized. The leader found Juan Sanchez, a Christian colonist, and asked him to help. Sanchez helped eagerly, going to the colonist authorities and explaining the situation. After this, several of the native Caspez people converted, but not their leader, because he feared losing his right as chief. In his hut with his wife, sister-in-law, and nephew, Our Lady appeared again, and the leader lashed out in anger. Our Lady disappeared, leaving behind a small painting, which the nephew brought to Juan Sanchez. The chief was then bitten by a venomous snake, and, dying, he suddenly asked to be baptized. He was baptized, and he miraculously survived the bite and lived a long life. In 1950, Pope Pius XII declared Our Lady of Coromoto the patroness of Venezuela. Our Lady appeared multiple times to Italian mystic and Capuchin poor Clare nun, St. Veronica Giuliani. 
In one instance, St. Veronica had a vision of hell, and Our Lady told her that many people do not believe in hell to their own peril. St. Veronica Giuliani later bore the stigmata. She was canonized in 1839 by Pope Gregory XVI. In St. Etienne la Laus, France, Our Lady appeared several times to a young shepherd girl, Blessed Benoit Rencarel. First, in May of 1664, Benoit saw St. Maurice, who led her to the place where she would see the Mother of God, the Valley of Kilns. On May 16th, Benoit first saw Our Lady with our infant Lord. For about four months, Our Lady appeared to Benoit every day. Finally, Our Lady took Benoit to an old chapel dedicated to Our Lady of the Good Encounter. The chapel was in bad condition, yet it smelled like violets. Our Lady requested a new chapel be built in honor of her beloved son, truly present in the Eucharist. In her apparitions, Our Lady spread the message of the importance of sinners doing penance and the importance of the conversion of souls. She continued to appear to Benoit until the latter's death in 1718. The Holy See were announced to have recognized the apparitions in 2008. Our Lady appeared multiple times to St. Paul of the Cross, an Italian priest and the founder of the Passionist Religious Order. Once, Our Lady showed St. Paul of the Cross a habit with the words Jesu XPI Passio written on it, which means the Passion of Jesus Christ. Our Lady later appeared to St. Paul again, clothed in this habit, and she told him that as she was clothed in mourning for the passion of her beloved Divine Son, so too St. Paul would found an order where all the members dressed in mourning for their Lord Jesus. St. Paul was canonized June 29, 1867, by Pope Pius IX. In Guaitara Canyon, Colombia, an indigenous woman named Maria Moises de Quinones and her deaf-mute daughter Rosa were caught in a bad storm. Our Lady was shown to Rosa, who uttered her first words, The Mestiza is calling me. Maria Moises did not see what her daughter saw, and the two went back to the village. Months later, the child died of sickness, and the heartbroken mother brought her body back to the canyon where Our Lady had appeared. Miraculously, Rosa began to live again, and an image of Our Lady and the Christ child was imprinted onto the rocks of the canyon. After this, the church was built, and the church was declared a minor basilica in 1954. In Vietnam, Catholics were persecuted by the government, so Vietnamese Catholics hid in the forest of Levang to continue practicing their faith. They remained here for a long time, but became sick from the forest water. Our Lady, with our infant Lord, appeared to the Catholics in 1798 and instructed them to make tea from the nearby leaves, which healed them. After this, the persecution of Catholics in Vietnam temporarily ended. A church was subsequently built, which was destroyed multiple times. Pope John XXIII elevated it to a minor basilica in 1961. Later, Pope St. John Paul II also recognized the importance of Our Lady of Levang, and in 2012, the basilica was once again rebuilt. In 1813, during the Battle of Leipzig, a Polish soldier named Tomasz Klosowski was seriously wounded. He prayed for Our Lady's intercession, asking to be able to go home to his family. Our Lady appeared to him, comforted him, and promised him he would return to Poland. He was instructed to find an image of Our Lady to help people receive graces. Tomasz searched for the image after the war and eventually found it and hung it on a tree in the forest near his home. In 1850, Our Lady was revealed to a shepherd named Mikolaj Sakatka. She spoke about the need for the conversion of sinners and the importance of prayer. She also warned of a coming plague in the Crimean War and requested that the picture of her in the forest be moved to a more appropriate place. Mikolaj spread the message, but was persecuted by the Russians. Two years later, the cholera epidemic began. The picture of her was moved to the Leichen Parish Church. Pope Paul VI issued an edict announcing the confirmation of the gracious image of Our Lady of Leichen as miraculous and ordered its crowning with the Pope's crown in 1965, and this was done two years later. In chateaulon sur seine France, a nun with the Sisters of Charity, St. Catherine Labore, was awoken in the middle of the night by a mysterious little boy, 
most likely her guardian angel, who led her to the chapel of the convent. In the chapel, St. Catherine saw the Blessed Mother and conversed with her for hours. Months later, St. Catherine saw Our Lady again in the same place. However, Our Lady was standing on a globe, and strobes of light hit the floor from the ring she wore on her fingers. She was surrounded by the words, when translated into English, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for those who have recourse to thee. St. Catherine was also shown a vision of the letter M with a cross above it, and below it, the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. Our Lady instructed St. Catherine Labore to have a medal constructed with the designs Catherine saw. The medal would provide protection and grace to wearers. The medal was created in 1832 and quickly grew popular. Catherine remained anonymous until her elderly years. Our Lady also gave other messages to Catherine about events in the world that would take place, all of which had come true by 1870. The Archbishop approved the apparitions in 1836. St. Catherine Labore was canonized in 1947. Also known as Our Lady of Zion, a French Jewish man who happened to oppose Catholicism named Alphonse Radisbon visited Rome and befriended a Catholic baron who tried to convert him to Catholicism. At the baron's request, Radisbon began wearing the miraculous medal just because his friend asked for it from him. The baron's friend died, and he and Radisbon went to church to pay their respects. For a minute, Radisbon was left alone in the church. At this time, Radisbon saw a vision of Our Lady, who said nothing, and at once he received an epiphany that Christianity is true. After receiving this vision, immediately he desired to become a Catholic. He quickly received his sacraments, and later became a Jesuit priest and missionary, taking on the name of Marie Alphonse. Radisbon's conversion was declared miraculous by the Vatican on June 3rd of the same year, 1842. In the small French village of La Salette, two shepherd children, Melanie Matou and Maximin Gerard, were tending their sheep when Our Lady appeared to them. She was sitting on a rock and weeping. She spoke to the children, who then went home and told others about what they saw. Quite a stir was caused by the purported apparition afterward. Our Lady told the children that people must turn away from sin and do penance, lest a terrible fate would bestow them. She also gave each child a secret for them to keep. This is another one which seems controversial, so I encourage you to do your own research if you would like to know more. The apparition was approved by the bishop on September 19, 1851. A very famous apparition, Our Lady appeared to a peasant girl, St. Bernadette Subarus, in a grotto called the Grotto of Massabiel, right outside the village of Lourdes in France, eighteen times in total. When Bernadette first saw Our Lady, she did not know who she was, and she prayed her rosary in front of her. She returned a few days later and saw Our Lady again, and again a few days after that. On that visit, Our Lady requested for Bernadette to come for another fifteen times, which she did, but not without difficulty, as the apparitions of the mysterious lady caused quite a stir in the village. At the ninth visit, Our Lady instructed Bernadette to, quote, drink from the stream and wash herself, unquote. This confused the girl because there was no stream. Bernadette, trying to find the stream, dug in the ground and water began to flow. Bernadette also ate the plants where the stream was. The new stream miraculously began to heal people. For a long time, Bernadette still did not know who this mysterious woman was. After she had successfully visited fifteen times, she went back for a sixteenth time and asked her once again what her name was. Our Lady revealed herself as the Immaculate Conception. Bernadette saw Our Lady at the grotto a couple more times after this before she felt that her time with Our Lady on earth had reached its natural conclusion. Bernadette went on to join the Sisters of Charity. In her time interacting with Bernadette on earth, Our Lady requested for people to do penance and pray for sinners. She also left the gift of the spring, which is an extremely popular site for pilgrimages today, with thousands of purported healings. The apparitions were approved for belief by the bishop in 1862, and Bernadette was canonized in 1933. Also known as Our Lady of Good Help, our Lady was shown twice to a Belgian immigrant woman named Adele Brees in the area then known as Robinsonville, now known as Champion, in Wisconsin in the United States. The first time, she did not say anything to Adele, who told her parents afterward. 
A few days later, in the same place, while Adele was walking to Mass with some other people, Our Lady once again appeared, but the people Adele were with did not see her. Adele asked her priest what she should do, and he told her to ask the woman of her identity and intentions in God's name. Adele did so on her way home that day when she saw Our Lady for the third time. Our Lady introduced herself as the Queen of Heaven and instructed Adele to take communion for the sake of sinners. She also asked Adele to teach children their catechism, how to cross themselves, and how to approach the sacraments. Our Lady then left. Adele did as she was asked, becoming a religious sister and dedicating her life to the education of Catholic children. A chapel was built at the site of the apparitions. The bishop declared the apparitions worthy of belief in 2010, and in 2016, the grounds were declared a national shrine. also known as Our Lady of Hope. At this time, France was in a war with Prussia, and they were losing very badly. France was under siege by the Prussians. In the French settlement of pont Maine, a boy named Eugene Barbadette saw Our Lady from out a barn window while he was with his family. His brother Joseph could also see her, but their father could not. They called the boy's school teacher, who came with two young girls. The school teacher could not see Our Lady, but the girls could. The girls described how Our Lady looked exactly the same as the boys had, despite not hearing what they had said. A crowd formed, and all the children could see Our Lady, but none of the adults could. A banner unfurled beneath Our Lady, which read, But pray, my children, God will hear you in time. My son allows himself to be touched. When the children read the message for the adults, the whole crowd began singing the hymn, Mother of Hope. Our Lady laughed with joy and sang with them. The crowd sang other hymns, and Our Lady reacted to them. She became sad when they sang My Sweet Jesus, and mournfully contemplated a crucifix during the song. When they sang Ave Mara Stella, she was melancholy but smiled. Our Lady disappeared about three hours after the apparition began. That same evening, the Prussian forces inexplicably halted their advance into France. The general said that the invisible Madonna was blocking the way. Months later, in May, a peace treaty was signed between France and Prussia. On February 2, 1872, the bishop declared that Our Lady truly appeared on January 17th. Our Lady appeared 15 times in the community of Pelavoisin in France to a servant woman named Estelle Foguet. Before the apparitions, Estelle was dying of tuberculosis, and she wrote a letter to the Blessed Mother asking for her intercession. On February 14th, she had hours left to live. That night, she saw Our Lady, who told her that she would suffer for five more days in honor of the five wounds of Our Lord. After those five days, she would either die or be healed. Indeed, Estelle continued to live despite her grim prognosis, and Our Lady visited her on each of the five days. On the fifth day, Our Lady showed Estelle a plaque which would be made as thanksgiving for her cure. The next day, Estelle received Holy Communion and was miraculously cured. Estelle saw Our Lady three more times in July after her healing and three more times in September. Our Lady showed Estelle a white scapular, the scapular of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Our Lady was shown to Estelle three more times in November and for the last time in December. She asked Estelle to show the scapular of the Sacred Heart of Jesus to the bishop and enlist his help in promoting wearing the scapular. The bishop indeed gave his permission for the scapular to be created. In these appearances, Our Lady spread a message of repentance and devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the white scapular. She also warns about the bad direction of the Church in France. Pope Leo XIII granted indulgences to pilgrims who visited Pelvoisin in 1892. In 1900, the Congregation of Rites officially approved the, sa the scapular of the Sacred Heart. In 1877, the church in Poland was in a difficult time, as many religious had been removed from their parishes for being rebellious, as the Polish language had been banned. In Getschwald, Poland, Our Lady appeared to a girl named Justina Sawrinska after the girl had her first examination of conscience. She saw Our Lady again each day for three days. On that third day, after the first appearance, Justina had with her another girl, Barbara Samulowska, who also saw Our Lady. When asked who she was, Our Lady introduced herself as the Blessed Virgin Mary of the Immaculate Conception, and when asked what she wanted, she said she wanted the children to pray the rosary. The girls saw Our Lady regularly until September. In this time, Our Lady informed the girls that priests would again come to the abandoned parishes if the people prayed fervently. Our Lady also blessed a spring and many healings were reported. Following the end of the apparitions, both girls joined the Daughters of Charity. For Justina, this was only temporary and she later married. Barbara took the name Stanislawa and participated in missions in Guatemala. 
On September 1, 1977, the bishop approved belief in the apparitions. In Knock, Ireland, a group of about 15 to 25 people saw Our Lady, her spouse St. Joseph, and St. John the Evangelist at the Church of St. John the Baptist. The figures did not move or speak, and with them was an altar surrounded by angels, and on the altar was a lamb and a cross. For about two hours, different people saw the apparition. After the apparition, there were many pilgrimages to the location, and many cures were reported. The apparition was approved by the Archbishop in 1879. Pope St. John Paul II visited the site for its 100th anniversary in 1979 and presented the rare gift of a golden rose. Fortuna Agrelli was a sick and dying young girl, and her parents prayed for her recovery. Our Lady, Our Infant Lord, St. Dominic, and St. Catherine of Siena all appeared to Fortuna. The girl asked to be healed, and Our Lady promised she would be healed if she did three novenas as a show of her faith. Indeed, Fortuna was healed on May 8th, and Our Lady appeared again, saying that people with intentions should do three novenas as a petition and three novenas as thanksgiving. An image depicting Our Lady, Lord, and the Saints was crowned by the Pope in 1965, though I'm not sure if this has anything to do with the apparition. During the Boxer Rebellion in China, soldiers attacked the village of Donglu. The Catholic priests of the village prayed for Our Lady's intercession. Accordingly, Our Lady appeared in the sky, and a fiery soldier, believed to be St. Michael, chased away the attackers. In thanks, the priest had a statue of Our Lady with our infant Lord created. Unfortunately, the statue was destroyed in the Cultural Revolution. In 1989, a painting was made to replace it. Pope Pius XI designated the church in Donglu as a Marian shrine in 1932. It was destroyed in 1941, but rebuilt in 1992. When he was 12 years old, Our Lady appeared to St. Maximilian Kolbe in Pabia, Nice, for Poland. He asked Our Lady what would become of him, and Our Lady appeared holding two crowns, one with red jewels and one with white jewels. Our Lady explained that the red crown represented the glory of martyrdom, while the white crown represented perseverance and purity. She asked the boy which crown he wanted, and he said he would accept both of them. St. Maximilian Kolbe went on to become a Franciscan friar. He was arrested by the Nazis for publishing anti-Nazi material and sent to the Auschwitz death camp. At one point, when prisoners were selected randomly to be killed, Kolbe volunteered to go in place of one of them, and he was indeed killed. He was canonized by Pope John Paul II in 1982 and was declared a martyr of charity. Our Lady first appeared to St. Padre Pio when he was 15 years old. At this time, the boy was leaving his family to join the Capuchin Order. Our Lady and Our Lord appeared to him and assured him that they would be with him in his new life. Our Lord blessed Pio before the Holy Mother and Son left. In 1929, Our Lady appeared again to St. Pio with Our Infant Lord while the priest was celebrating Mass. At this time, St. Pio was, was suffering both physically and mentally. Our Lady said, Be at peace. We are with you. You belong to us, and we are yours. St. Padre Pio was canonized by Pope St. John Paul II in 2002. Another very famous appearance of Our Lady. After the turn of the century in Portugal, things were very hectic. The monarchy was overthrown in 1908, and 1,700 religious were killed from 1911 to 1916 by anti-Christian groups. Three shepherd children, siblings Francisco and Jacinta Marto, and their cousin Lucia de Santos, were outside when they saw Our Lady for the first time on May 13th. She told them she was from heaven and requested that they return on the 13th of every month for the next six months. The children heeded her request and were given messages from Our Lady. She told them that devotion to her Immaculate Heart would bring souls to salvation. She also gave them three visions. The first vision was a vision of hell. The second vision showed the end of World War I and also showed World War II. The third vision was very cryptic and showed a papal assassination. After each vision, Our Lady explained to the children what it meant, and these three explanations are known as the secrets of Fatima. The first vision represented what would happen to sinners. The second vision showed what would happen if Russia was not consecrated. The third explanation was never revealed to the public. Also during the apparitions, Our Lady expressed the importance of the rosary and other prayers. She gave information about what was going to happen in the world regarding things such as communism, war, and corruption. 
Many people flocked to Fatima in response to hearing about the apparitions. On October 13th, the sixth apparition, the miracle of the sun took place. Around 70,000 people witnessed the sun dance and spin and send out rays of color. Sadly, Our Lady also told the children that Francisco and Jacinta would pass away soon, and this came true. Both died in the 1818 influenza epidemic. Lucia, however, lived on and joined the Carmelite order. She had other visions of Mary and of Our Lord in her life. In 1930, the bishop approved the apparitions. After their respective deaths, all three of the visionaries were canonized by the church. The apparitions of Fatima seem extremely complicated, and I implore you to do more research if you want to know more. In Campinas, Brazil, there was a nun named Sister Amalia of Jesus Flagellated. She had recently co-founded a new order, the Institute of the Missionary Sisters of Jesus Crucified, alongside Bishop Francisco de Barreto. Her kinsman came to her and told her that his wife was dying. He was very upset. After he left, Amalia went to the church to be with our Lord truly present in the Eucharist and pray to our Lord for help. Our wondrous Lord himself came to Amalia and instructed her to pray invoking Our Lady of Tears, his mother's sorrows. Months later, in March, Sister Amalia was in the chapel kneeling when suddenly she was lifted up and she saw Our Lady. Our Lady gave Amalia the rosary of her tears and told her that Our Lord would grant graces begged for the sake of her tears. This rosary is different from a normal rosary. The bishop approved the devotion of the Rosary of Tears in 1934. Also known as the Virgin with the Golden Heart, Our Lady appeared 33 times in Borang, Belgium to five children. Starting on November 29th, four of the children saw Our Lady near their school, floating above a bridge. After this, over the course of the visits, Our Lady introduced herself as the Immaculate Virgin. She requested that a chapel be built and said that people should come on pilgrimage to Borang. She said that people must pray, and she revealed her golden immaculate heart to the children. The bishop declared that Our Lady did appear to the children in 1949. Following the apparitions, all of the children lived normal lives. Also known as Our Lady of the Poor, Our Lady appeared to a girl named Mariette Becco eight times in Beno, Belgium. Mariette first saw Our Lady outside the kitchen window in her garden. Our Lady beckoned for Mariette to come outside, but the girl's mother forbade her. Mariette was able to talk to Our Lady a few days later, who introduced herself as Our Lady of the Poor. Later, Our Lady asked Mariette to put her hands in a nearby spring, which she did. The next day, Our Lady said the spring was reserved for all the nations to bring comfort to the sick. She later also requested a chapel. Our Lady appeared a few more times before saying goodbye to Mariette. People mocked the visionary for her claims. In Our Lady's messages to Mariette, she emphasized the importance of prayer and said she came to alleviate suffering. The chapel Our Lady requested was indeed built. Mariette lived a normal life after the vision ceased. The bishop approved the apparitions in 1949. In Simbres, Brazil, Our Lady appeared 30 times to two teenage girls, Maria de los Teixeira and Maria da Conchicio. At the time of the apparitions, Simbras was a poor community terrorized by violent bandits. This was such a problem that families would hide in the vegetation, sometimes for days, so that they would not be victimized by the bandits. One woman, Dona Alta Monteiro Texeira, was not able to hide with her family because she was due to give birth. She gave birth to a son, but he was weak and would not live long. Alta asked her newborn son to ask for Mary's intercession after his death, for Mary to pray to God for the land to be made safe. Months later, Our Lady appeared to the two girls. One of the girls was the daughter of Alta. Both girls were poor and illiterate. In these events, a German priest asked Our Lady questions through the girls. The girls would repeat Our Lady's answers back to the priest. In these apparitions, Our Lady warned that terrible things would befall Brazil if people did not do prayer and penance. This was specifically related to the spread of communism. Following the apparitions, Maria de los Teixeira became a religious and took the name Adelia. The church recognized the apparitions as supernatural in 2021. In Monte Chiari, Italy, Our Lady appeared many times to a sickly nurse named Pierina Gilli. In 1944, while Pierina was sick and dying, she saw visions of Sister Saint Maria Crocifissa de Rosa. Sister Maria anointed Pierina with oil given to her by Our Lady and told her that she would be cured, but that she had a heavy cross to bear. In 1946, 
Pierina once again lay sick when Our Lady herself appeared to her alongside Sister St. Maria. Our Lady's immaculate heart was pierced by three swords. The swords represented loss of vocation by a religious, religious who live in mortal sin, and religious who become enemies of the church. Our Lady revealed that she came to ask for prayers and sacrifices with three intentions. One, for religious who betray their vocation. Two, to repair the mortal sin of these souls. And three, to repair the betrayal of priests who make themselves unworthy of their ministry. Our Lady appeared to Pierina more times after this, continuing into 1947, asking for prayer, sacrifice, and penance. At one point, the sword which previously pierced her immaculate heart laid at her feet, and her heart was adorned with three roses instead. The roses represented prayer, sacrifice, and penance. Our Lady also urged for the faithful observance of Holy Mass, Holy Communion, Eucharistic Adoration, and praying of the Rosary. After these apparitions, Pierina lived secluded in a convent for 19 years. In 1966, in Fontanelle, Italy, Our Lady once again appeared to Pierina at a spring of water, and the spring was blessed and was called the Font of Grace. Additionally, after this, Our Lady requested that wheat from the nearby field be made into Eucharistic hosts. Our Lady continued to appear to Pierina until 1983. In 2019, the bishop approved veneration of the apparition. During a period of civil strife in France, three young girls in Lille Bouchard were praying the rosary in church when they saw Our Lady alongside the angel Gabriel. They called for two friends to come see, and one of them was able to see. The girls saw Our Lady for six days. Our Lady asked for the French to pray, and she also requested a grotto be built. The grotto was completed in 1988. Public veneration of the apparition was approved by the Archbishop in 2001. Over the course of 15 years, Our Lady appeared 31 times to Maria Esperanza in Batania, Venezuela. Our Lady warned of impending war and suffering, but she also emphasized reconciliation and love. In one case, on March 25, 1984, 150 other people also saw Our Lady. Since then, many miracles have allegedly occurred, including a Eucharistic miracle where it was found that the Eucharist was bleeding human blood. The bishop approved the apparitions as authentic in 1987. At this time, Nicaragua was going through a civil war. In Cuapa, Nicaragua, a sacristan named Bernardo Mitch Martinez saw a statue of Our Lady glowing when he entered church one evening. The next month, he saw Our Lady while he was walking through a field. Our Lady asked for daily prayer of the rosary, the first Saturday devotion, and the promotion of peace. She also requested that people burn sinful books. However, Bernardo ignored the apparition because he wanted to avoid problems, but he saw her again eight days later. Our Lady appeared a few more times after this, asking for devotion to Christ and warning about the future. In 1982, the bishop affirmed the existence of the apparitions. At Kibeho College in Rwanda, Our Lady appeared to three girls, Alfonsi Mumareke, Natalie Mukamzimpaka, and Marie-Claire Mukungongo. Our Lady asked everyone to pray in order to prevent a terrible war. On August 19th, the girls were shown a, vi a terrible vision of future violence. Uniquely, it seems that for the most part, the visionaries received separate apparitions, not the same apparition. In these apparitions, Our Lady asked for prayer of the rosary, penance, and sacrifice. She also predicted the terrible Rwandan genocide, which would begin in 1994. Marie Claire herself died in the massacre. The bishop approved the apparitions as authentic in 2001. In San Nicolas de los Arroyos, Argentina, Our Lady, along with our infant Lord, appeared to a housewife named Gladys Coroga de Mata many times over the course of roughly seven years. Our Lady asked Gladys to find a statue of Our Lady and Lord which had been blessed by Pope Leo XIII, and she did indeed find it. Also in these apparitions, Our Lady asked for a shrine to be built, for a medal to be made, for a scapular to be made, and for people to glorify and trust in the Lord. Multiple miraculous healings have been attested. The bishop declared that the apparitions were supernatural in origin in 2016. Our Lady has appeared to many more saints than just the ones I included in the video. She appeared to saints like St. Rose of Lima, St. Hannibal Mary de Francia, St. Luigi Guanella, St. Anthony Mary Claret, St. Cajetan of Thien, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of God, St. Stanislaus Kotzka, St. Philip Neri, St. John Vianney, St. Gemma Galgani, and many others. 
I decided not to include every single appearance because I didn't want the video to get too bloated, and a lot of them, all I could find is that she did appear, but nothing about what she said or did. Thank you for watching this video about the Marian apparitions. Please let me know if I made any mistakes or if there is anything I forgot to add. I am definitely not a theologian, historian, or scholar. I am just a girl who wanted to know about Marian apparitions and saw that a video like this hadn't been made to my knowledge. You always hear about certain apparitions like Guadalupe, Lourdes, and Fatima, but if you just know about these, you would wonder why Our Lady would appear three times only so long after her assumption. I hope this video explains just how often Our Lady has been sent down to earth by our Lord. Personally, after studying all these apparitions, patterns I've noticed are gifts from God delivered by Our Lady, requests for buildings honoring God, words of encouragement to the despondent, help in times of strife, warnings regarding the future, the instruction to, pe to pray for sinners, the instruction to do penance, and the instruction to repent. It should be understood that knowledge of these apparitions, with the exception of the woman clothed with the sun, are not necessary for salvation. They are part of something called private revelation, which is revelation revealed to a specific person at a specific time and place, as opposed to public revelation, which is everything in the Bible which is necessary for every person at every time and place. If any of these apparitions are benef beneficial to your faith, this is good, but if they're not, don't stress about that. As St. Pio said, hope, pray, and don't worry. You should also keep in mind what I said in the introduction. These apparitions are not for the glory of Mary, they are for the glory of God. We love Mary, but she's not a goddess. She's merely a human, an immaculate human, but still a human. One thing I would like to request, although perhaps no one will see this since I'm saying it at the end, is for Protestants to please re refrain from saying mean things in the comments. I have respect for Protestants. I used to be a Protestant, and all I ask for is respect in return. Thank you for your charity. All praise and honor be given to God. Amen.